Hello, I'm Dr. Rick Green, a surgeon from Charlotte, North Carolina. It is a pleasure to introduce this wound care program developed by your healthcare team and patients and sponsored by the American College of Surgeons. The wound care program, including videos, booklet, and checklists, will teach you how to care for your wound. Use the skills checklist inside the back cover of the booklet to guide you through the steps in your care. Your feedback is important, so please complete the patient evaluation form by mail or online. I wish you all the best for your recovery. Dressings are protective materials applied to a wound. They are used for several purposes. To maintain a moist environment, to protect against contamination, to control bleeding, to protect from injury. A primary dressing must be in direct contact with the wound and should completely cover the wound. A secondary dressing is used to cover or hold a primary dressing in place. A bandage is a strip of material such as gauze. It can be used as a secondary dressing to hold a primary dressing in place. Bandages may also protect, immobilize, compress, or support a wound or injured body part. There are many types of bandages. The type of wound you have will determine what dressing or bandage is needed. Dressing should always be large enough to cover the entire wound to keep air, dirt, and water away and to protect the wound from injury. Wounds like scrapes, burns, and punctures may need to be kept moist and clean to help reduce scarring and make healing go faster. If you have a surgical wound or your wound was treated by a healthcare professional, you should receive wound care instructions. You will usually be told how to clean the wound area and to change the dressing or bandage daily. Protective dressings like plain gauze are still the most commonly used dressings today, but they may dry out and stick to a wound. Scrapes need to be kept moist and clean. Dressings made of silicone and hydrogels help provide moisture to dry wounds and reduce scarring. Some dressings are called occlusive or semi-occlusive. Occlusive dressings have sealed edges and they keep air, moisture, and germs away from the wound. They are sold in drugstores and your doctor will tell you if this kind of dressing is needed. Protective dressings may also be needed when a wound is draining, the skin tears, or the wound is fragile and open like a burn or a blister. Dry, non-draining wounds may need to be protected with a continuous moisture barrier. Your healthcare provider can advise you what type of dressing to use, how to apply it, and most are available in a drugstore. You may need to apply a dressing that has been treated with a medication to provide active wound healing. Some of these dressings may require a prescription and may be expensive. There are a wide variety of these dressings now available, and this video will document some of the more common types of medicated dressings. Antibacterial dressings are used to prevent a wound from becoming infected or to treat a wound infection. Some may be ointments, liquids or gels supplied in a tube or package. They can be purchased in a pharmacy or may need a prescription from your doctor. You should discuss any allergies you have with your health care provider because antibacterial dressings including iodine products are absorbed into the skin. Another antibacterial dressing includes silver base dressings used to treat burns, scrapes, or other wounds that may easily become infected. More advanced products like foam and alginates absorb drainage and protect the wound. Absorbent dressings are used when there is moderate to heavy drainage from a wound. If you have a wound that is draining, you may need to use one of these absorbent types of dressings as a primary dressing placed directly on the wound. Foam dressings are especially good for absorbing moderate to heavy drainage. Alginate dressings are used to maintain a moist surface around the wound to promote healing and protect new healthy tissue. Alginate conforms well to wounds of all shapes and sizes and is easy to remove. Here, an alginate dressing is applied to the wound. 
Alginate transforms into a gel and absorbs drainage from a wound. A gauze dressing is applied over that and a flexible bandage is wrapped to keep the primary dressings in place and help to further protect the wound. Debridement is the process of removing dead tissue from wounds. Removing dead tissue from a wound will allow healthy tissue to grow. Mechanical debridement may be done by your doctor using sterile instruments. You should not try to debride a wound yourself because the wound can bleed and become larger and damaged if debriding is not done properly. There are also some medicated dressings which may help the debriding process and gently clean and heal the wound. Transparent film dressings are thin sheets of see-through material like polyurethane. They come in many shapes and sizes to conform to different wounds. They are used when there is little or no drainage, when dead tissue needs debridement, or to hold another dressing securely to the skin. Your wound care doctor will let you know if dead tissue needs to be removed from your wound. Wound care may involve frequent cleaning and timed dressing changes. Over-the-counter pain medication can reduce discomfort before a dressing change. To put on a new dressing, always wash your hands if they are dirty or apply a 60% alcohol-based hand gel before touching your dressing or wound. Remove the old dressing carefully with a gloved hand or plastic bag. Inspect for any change in drainage, odor, or increased bleeding. Discard the old dressing and glove in a sealed plastic bag. Clean the wound gently with soap and water or using any special instructions you were given. Your doctor may prescribe an antibiotic ointment or other medication to help prevent infection and reduce the size of the scar by keeping a heavy scab from forming. After cleaning the wound, place a primary dressing directly on the wound. Secure the dressing with tape or by wrapping a bandage completely around the dressing. If you are wrapping a bandage, extend the bandage one inch past the dressing in all directions to make sure it is completely covered. Wash your hands again. Remove the dressing and clean the wound at least once a day. You should also remove the dressing and inspect the wound if there are signs of excessive inflammation and drainage. Wound pain or pressure cannot be controlled by medication or there is wound separation. Continue to use tap water for wound cleansing after 48 hours unless you are told to change to another solution. Call your doctor if you experience any of these signs. Increased drainage or bleeding from the wound. Increased swelling or redness around the wound. A foul odor or pus coming from the wound. A fever of 101 degrees or 38.3 degrees centigrade. Wound tissue that changes from pink to white, yellow or black in color. Increased size or depth of the wound pain at the site that will not go away even after taking pain medication, a wound that has split open, or a wound where stitches or staples have come out too soon. If your wound does open, cover it with gauze or a moist clean towel. Call your health care provider immediately for more directions or go to the nearest emergency department.